So where did it all go wrong for Manchester United this season? And I think we can all agree the majority of blame has to go on the players. We finished second last season. I guess it was an overachievement with Liverpool injuries, with Chelsea collapsing a little bit. But we did finish second last season. We signed Sancho, Varane and Ronaldo. We had high expectations for this season. I said, I don't think we'll win the league. I don't think we'll win the Champions League. But I said top four FA Cup. And then maybe next season, once we get a CDM, we could challenge for a title. And now we're back to almost square one, where I feel like we are two, three seasons away from challenging from a title. Ten has got to get rid of most of the squad. He's got to bring in lots of new players. I think ten will go this summer. Five will come in. Then the following summer, a big bunch will go. There's a lot to get rid of. And we've kind of fallen out of out of love with the squad a year ago I loved a lot of these players and now I can't stand a lot of them I want them gone so what really has gone wrong this season we're going to be diving into the dressing room release and things Ragnick has said some exclusives we obviously know that Laurie Whitwell did a really good uh, behind the scenes report on Manchester United um, via The Athletic so I would definitely recommend checking out The Athletic really good um, outlet information we're going to look at other reports as well we'll just sort of dive into you know, where did it go wrong? Who were the troublemakers? Who were having the fights and training and all of that? So make sure you smash a like. Make sure you subscribe as well. Um, I am going to do a transfer news live stream tomorrow. I'll be live much earlier tomorrow. It'll be like a four o'clock Saturday show, a lot earlier than I normally go live. So make sure you subscribe with post notification bell on. Uh, I've got some Timbit information. I've got the latest on De Jong. I'll be covering it in my live tomorrow. Also, we apparently we put a bid on a 50 million bid on Neves. That's come from the Sun, so probably a load of rubbish. But we'll, we'll discuss that as well. So if you want to stay up to date with all the transfer news, make sure you subscribe because a big transfer news show is coming tomorrow. Um, if there's any breaking news, then I will go live tonight. If we sign in, I will go live tonight. But as we said, back to the video, back to the leaks. What's going on? So I actually wrote down the list of all the leaks that I can remember. Um, and then I'm going to read out some of the information so this is all stuff i remember going on from the beginning of the season yeah we started with players turning on ollie saying ollie wasn't good enough it started with reports that why is Maguire playing why is ollie always rewarding the same players game time there was a report about how you know the squad was baffled donny never gets the chance under ollie and how donny's good in training and then by fuming that he was fit and Maguire's injured and he played injured Maguire. And it all started under in ollie's final weeks with them turning on ollie saying ollie mckenna carrick we're not good enough. There was this whole report saying Ronaldo's presence had unsettled the dressing room. I remember one of the first reports was that Ronaldo had fallen out with the youngsters because some of the younger players at Man United didn't like Ronaldo criticising them, which I think is true. I mean, obviously not every leak that comes out is true. I think the ones that come out from Laurie Whitwell and The Athletic are true. The ones that come out from The Mail and The Sun do take with a pinch of salt. But there was a report about, you know, younger players falling out for Ronaldo because, when you know, when Roy Keane and Gary Neville would criticise Ronaldo, he'd be like, brilliant, they're brilliant players. I want to learn from them. When Ronaldo criticised some of our youngsters, not all, they were like, F off Ronaldo, like, why are you criticising me, you know, you know, I'm too cool, I, I don't know what they were doing, they, they just couldn't take criticism, we know a lot of the United players can't take criticism, because they rung up Rio Ferdinand, one of them, allegedly, and said, can you not criticise me, and rung up Gary Neville, like, can you not criticise me, you know, Ronaldo's criticised them, Ragnar's criticised them, Oli's criticised them, they can't take it, it's like, if you tell them they're not good enough, no, I am good enough, it's not my fault, it's their fault, it's like, you know, they can't admit when they're wrong, other leaks that had come out there was was there was a fight there was a fight at Carrington. They had to end training early. Now that fight was actually between Fred and Hannibal over a tackle. That's not an issue. Fred's not a problem maker. Hannibal's not a problem maker. They got in a fight over a bad tackle. That happens at every team. Uh, but apparently, you know, there's been times where Carrington and training has ended early because of you just squad tensions. You know, when you think about it, how many holidays has these Man United players had? Uh, you know, Man United have had more holidays than any other team, these players. You know, we'll have a two-week break, then all of a sudden Ragnar will give them a break. Whenever there's a break in matches, Ragnar's given them a few days off, or Oli's given them a few days off. Oli flew to Norway, Ragnar flew to Bahamas. Apparently, because of all the tension going in, in within the squad, Ragnar just kept giving breaks, which is awful because they don't need a break. They need to work, they need to be fitter, they need to train harder. But whenever was, there was a problem within the squad, whenever player tensions were bad, whenever we kept losing... They were getting rewarded with a holiday. No wonder we kept losing. If you lose three games in a row and it's all stale, or well, you know what, let's take a break, let's go on holiday. No bloody wonder some of these players are playing so bad. You know, Lingard, when he didn't get his transfer, got a holiday. Cavani got a holiday as a thank you for signing on. Like, we're rewarding players for, you know, things like that. Rewarding Lingard and Cavani with a holiday to please them, shut them up, because they're going to cause a problem if we don't. Obviously, there was the constant bitching about the coaches um 
We obviously know uh, apparently Ragnik's training sessions were too hard. That was a leak that came out three weeks into Ragnik's spell. Both Scott McTominay and David De Gea have said things in press conferences after matches. Scott basically said that not everyone in the dressing room is fr our friends. You know, some of the players need to look in the mirror and say, am I working hard enough? David De Gea said the players that don't want to be here, they can go. You know, you've got to give it your all. We know De Gea and Scott are not problem causers. Um, even though Scott McTominay has been crap this season, he's got the right mentality, you know, and that's probably why he'll stay at United. And that's probably why he plays so much, because at least he tries. Uh, and we know that they're not problem causers. But again, they basically said, yeah, there are players at Man United that aren't trying this season as well, which is dreadful. Obviously, there was Ragnick calling out players, which caused a bit of friction within the squad. You know, I don't think Ragnick's totally to blame, but I think Ragnick could have had a better relationship with the players. But if you're there for six months and they're not trying and they're blatantly throwing at you under the bus, I kind of understand why Ragnick was calling them out. I liked how Ragnick called out the Glazers. I think Ragnick, as much as he should be calling out the players and he shouldn't be protecting them like Oli did, I think Ragnick calling out the players did make the situation worse. Uh, we obviously know players refused to listen to Ragnick's instructions. That's why you saw Ilanga playing a lot more towards the end because at least he would listen and trap back and all of that we know that man united did squad meals they did socials the way whitwell said you know every month united would do socials um, and some players just wouldn't show up to that as well and you know team bonding is really important at a club like united team bonding is really important in football because we don't play like a team we don't play like a team that like each other there's no chemistry and you know if you don't like each other if you don't get on with your team if there's no chemistry you can be all these great players but look at england remember england back in the day so not this current england squad but the england team with terry and rio who just had beef on twitter you know, they were so good. Terry Rio, Gerard Lampard, Scholes never won anything because they never got on. They all didn't like each other. All too many egos. That is Manchester United. So many great individuals, but we're playing awfully. We don't get on because of egos and all of that. And that is a big problem at Manchester United. Player egos not getting on and all of that. And, you know, players are not showing up for squad socials. Oh, I'm too cool. Or I don't want to be here. Why should I show up? And, you know, we called off the annual awards ceremony, which fair enough. But, you know, the women's team have been good. The youth team have won a cup you know you've got to think about the women's team the youth team you know you've called off the ceremony because the first team was crap but the youth team was good the women's team was good every other team was good you know they don't they only think about themselves the first team you know their socials are with the youth team as well getting to know them and you know it's dreadful obviously the injuries i always said this and everyone has been saying this do you think if man united were in a champions league final the day we played Crystal Palace, that half the players that were injured would have been injured. No, so many players probably got the slightest injury or not injured at all and just thought, yeah, I don't fancy playing, you know, it's bad. I don't want to get stick on social media because we, when we play and we're crap, you get stick. And some of the players are probably thinking, I don't want to play, I don't want to get the stick. I know Luke Shaw is generally injured. I know a couple of Pogba is generally injured. But Cavani, do you think he was really injured for that long? Cavani wanted to leave in January. He was fed up not being main man. He was fed up not being the main striker. He wanted to leave in January. We wouldn't let him go to Barcelona, especially because obviously what happened with Greenwood and obviously Martial left. You know, we wouldn't let him go. And all of a sudden, from January until like April, Cavani was injured for three months. Was he actually injured? Because he was going to the box and he was going on holiday. He was doing this, this, that. You know, do you think do you think it's a coincidence that Cavani was then injured as soon as he didn't get his move to Barcelona? How many, so many players, as soon as it started getting bad on the Ragnick, once we got knocked out the Champions League, the players just assumed the season was over. They thought, we're knocked out the Champions League, we're not going to get top four, we've got nothing to play for. They assumed the season was over. That's what the players did. That's 100% what they did. They just assumed the season was over, over way too early and a lot of them just got injured, stopped trying, stopped caring. And, you know, we ended the season with Mata having to start games and... You know, Alanga starting games and it's just madness as well. One of the worst things that happened, and this happened on quite early on in Ragnit's tenure, was he said like Martial didn't want to play or something, and that's why Martial wasn't in the squad. Martial went on social media and called Ragnik a liar. You know, that Ragnik sh sh and Martial should be doing that issue privately. Why are they going on social media doing it publicly? Just again, sums up that this squad is a social media squad. They care more about how they look on social media PR than how they do on the pitch. We had Lingard, obviously, wasn't available for the Middlesbrough game. Ragnick said he wanted a holiday because he didn't get to move to Newcastle. Lingard went on social media, was saying Ragnick's a liar again, going behind the manager's back. You know, it's not on from Lingard. And, um, you know, from what we know, Lingard did get a holiday because he was pissed off he didn't get moved to Newcastle. I understand why Lingard was pissed off, but he should have been professional. And he would, and he should have been like, I want to be at United, prove myself for the last six months I'm here. He didn't. He just he stropped, he moped, he didn't get the game time he wanted. I know that Lingard was lied to and treated poorly by Ragnick and Ollie, but he was very, very unprofessional. Went on telling Scholes 
uh, the dress room's a mess and all of that incredibly unprofessional from Jesse Lingard we had Eric Bayer again going on, on social media saying him and Varane should be the starting partnership you shouldn't be saying that on social media Lingard, Bayer and Martial will be three players obviously leaving but they were all going on social media saying things as well we know Eric Bailly lied about where he was when he was on international duty returned from international duty late returned with an injury and Ragnick tore into Bayer in front of the whole squad was fuming which is probably why Jones started playing over Bayer a lot more and Laurie Whitwell confirmed that we obviously know from Samuel Luckhurst that, you know, Manchester United senior players attended a meeting with Ragnick without Maguire. And apparently some players hijacked that meeting. They had control over Ragnick. There's definitely, obviously, too much player power in the dressing room. We said that an agent, and we also heard from Mark Ogden, that apparently an agent of a senior player complained to the club that Ronaldo had been given more prominence than their client in promotional campaigns. Like, literally a player had gone to their agent saying they're pissed off that Ronaldo gets more attention in Man United promotional campaigns. Of course he does, he's Ronaldo. Someone, you know, there's obviously, with Man United, there's obviously a problem of egos. You know, Ronaldo's come in, you're now not the biggest player at the club, you've got an ego problem. Ronaldo's come in, he criticises you, how dare you criticise me, you, you've got an ego problem. Some players can't take criticism. Some players at Man United can't admit that it's their fault. You know, when we have a poor game, very few players go, yeah, I was poor today, it's my fault. They're blaming everyone else. You're all shit, stop blaming everyone else, you're all shit. Like, no one's taking any responsibility and, you know... Complaining about Ronaldo getting all these promotional campaigns and stuff on the pitch, well, maybe focus about your focus more on your performance on the pitch than what you're doing off the pitch. I think this a big problem with this is obviously the Glazers, Ed Woodward Judge. They push social media, they push interaction, they push followers. That it's caused a sense of jealousy in the Man United dressing room where he's got more followers than me, he's got a better brand deal than me, he's got higher wages than me. It's caused this toxic jealousy kind of competition in the United dressing room where it's like no one can take stick, no one can take criticism, they're annoyed if someone criticises them, it affects their ego, but they're too focused on social media, they're, they're too focused working their PR teams and actually doing stuff in training. We obviously know Edison Cavani couldn't believe it got dark outside in winter after 3pm and reportedly Cavani was the player complaining and annoyed that he had to train and drive home in the dark, that training was too long and too intense. So Cavani, who we begged to stay, gave him ridiculous wages, so many holidays, let him have extended international break. He barely made himself available for any games. He was on such high wages. When Ronaldo at 37 had to play week in, week out because Cavani just couldn't be bothered to come to training. He, he was faking injuries. He just could not be bothered. He didn't try and he was just leaking stuff to the media. We know Cavani, Lingard and Bayer have all leaked stuff to the media. We don't know that, but we've been told that through you know reports allegedly Cavani Bai and Lingard have leaked stuff to the media according to reports we don't actually know that but you know I don't know who's leaked I don't know who the leaker is but if we were to make a guess it's definitely someone that isn't playing is it because Ragnick knows who the leaker is he's not going to start them it's obviously someone that isn't playing and it's not Martial it's not Donny because they left in January the leaks have got worse we're also told that Ronaldo, Varane, Paul Pogba and Bruno Fernandes called a meeting with Ragnick to request a change in tactics. I look at this two ways ago. They shouldn't really be saying that to Ragnick. You know, he's the manager. They shouldn't be telling him what to do. Player power issue. But at the same time, I'm going, at least they're showing some leadership. Where's Maguire? Why is Maguire not at that meeting? He's captain. It's very obvious from all the leaked reports. Again, they do not respect Maguire as captain. Maguire is never involved in the higher up meetings. They're, te they're saying he shouldn't be captain. You know, I think maybe Maguire being captain has caused some jealousy between higher up players going, how is he captain of this club? I don't know. I think Maguire's lack of leadership is not helped because he's trying to control the dressing room. He can't because Maguire's been so bad. The players think he's shy and he's captain telling you what to do. You're not going to listen to him. No offence to Maguire. The players should be listening to him, but it's crap, you know, you know. But if a player's been that crap and they're telling you you're you're being crap and telling you to do better, you're just going to be like, F off, you've been shit this season. This was a report that came out from Mark Ogden, and hopefully you can't hear an annoying noise in the background because uh, there's an ice cream truck going off over there, saying that Edison Cavani was pissed off after giving the number seven shirt to Ronaldo and was... And, had to, and was told he had to fight for his place. Cavani couldn't believe it got dark outside after 3pm and Cavani wanted to go to Barcelona. Basically, Cavani, as soon as Ronaldo came in, he got pissed off because he got told, you've got to fight for your place. Ronaldo's now the main man. Cavani's ego did not like not being the main man. Cavani was like, I don't want to have to fight for my place. I can't be bothered for that. I want to be a guaranteed starter and got pissed off. He wants to go back to South America. He wants to go to a warmer climate. He's not happy in England, it's obvious. Cavani only stayed for the money. That That's 100% fact. We begged Cavani to stay. He only stayed for the money. And it got worse because when he realised he's not the main man, he didn't care. He's like, well, I'm not going to play week in, week out. Why should I show up to training? I've got to fight for my place. Can't be bothered. I'm Cavani. You know, he's got a bit of an ego complex. Cavani was definitely a problem 
maker as well. Again, Mark Ogden reported a lot of upset within the squad about Maguire being captain. Samuel Lutker said this, um, that apparently um, some of the Man United players referred to Ragnick as specs behind his back and the squad's disillusionment was a source of fascination from Sir Alex as well. Sir Alex couldn't believe how the squad was so broken but the fact that someone like I said that the players were called Ragnick Specs behind his back that's like bullying that's like American high school 12 year old bullies you're professional footballers you're adults you're on ridiculous money and you're calling your interim manager who's only here for six months that's having to do a job for six months and it's not even his job he, at the end of the day Ragnick is here to do long-term things consultancy role recruitment that's what Ragnick's good at he's doing a job that he's not good at and he's got to work with players that are idiots he's got to work with a board that's absolute idiots and then these players are acting like 12 year old bullies all specs specs oh you're funny like players calling Ragnick specs behind his back is so childish absolutely childish and this is the worst one that Samuel Lutkus came out with last week, saying that one Man United player complained that Ragnick talked to him like a child and did not give a shite about Ragnick's advice. Another was dubbed the teacher's pet. Man United players wonder why Ragnick's talking to them like a child when they're calling him specs behind his back. You're acting like a child. You're acting childish. You've been acting silly. You've been acting childish all season. No wonder he talks to you like a child. And because Ragnick talked to this player like a child, they said, I'm not going to listen to him. Ego problem. Ego problem. That is the squad... The issue this season has been the players, their egos and them caring too much about social media and money. Uh, apparently, players were complaining that Alanga's game time was mind boggling. Well, you know what? Maybe if you try, maybe if you listen to Ragnick, maybe if you put the work in, you'd be playing over Alanga. Alanga's only playing because he's going to track back. He's going to at least Alanga was one of the few players that would do what Rashford, not Rashford, would do what Ragnick told him to do. If Ragnick gave Alanga instructions, he would do that. He wasn't the best player, but he was following the manager's instructions, listening to the manager. And that's why he played, because when the manager's got players bitching about him behind his back, complaining, moaning, not trying, not tracking back, not listening to his instructions and stropping, they might be a better player than, uh, than Alanga. But you know what? Maybe, maybe this was Rashford. I don't know if it was Rashford complaining, but Rashford's a better player than Alanga. But Alanga was playing more than Rashford because Rashford wasn't even tracking back, chasing second balls, pressing. Alanga was doing what Ragnick told him to do, and that's why he played. Um, as well we had Eric Bailly questioning how Maguire was starting over him look I think Eric Bailly I felt sorry for him at, sorry for him at the beginning of the season when you know Maguire was injured and played versus Leicester and he was the worst player on the pitch and we shipped four goals and Bailly was fit I don't feel sorry for Bailly now because he's obviously causing problems complaining moaning dressing room leaks the lot as well uh, players annoyed that Solskjaer allowed Cavani all these extra holidays why do you care why do you care Cavani's gone on holiday you know boo Cavani he's an idiot do you actually want an extra holiday or do you want to play for United? Because it seems that more players are interested in getting an extra holiday and playing for United. Again, more reports about players annoyed that Cavani got an extra holiday. It's like players are annoyed that Ronaldo gets more social media attention, Cavani gets an extra holiday and this player makes more money. It's like, why do you care what your teammates are doing? Why is it toxic? Care about yourself. Again, an ego problem at Manchester United. And obviously we know for Steve Bates, that's it. He reported that allegedly Ralph Ranick had privately branded the Manchester United dressing room as selfish, overinflated, lacking quality and too powerful. And senior sources say Ragnick has been staggered by the lack of professionalism amongst the first team squad. Ragnick claims some of the Manchester United players have blatantly ignored instructions when he's given them a pattern of play to employ in certain games. And Ragnick has told United they need a clear out. This came out from Steve Bates. And that's basically Ragnick saying the players are too fat, powerful, they don't listen, overinflated egos and selfish. And I think, you know, look, going from the dressing reports, the fact that players have leaked a lot as well, the lack of respect under two managers, they're complaining about everything. There's no player taking responsibility, saying they're to blame. It seems that they're blaming everyone else. Their PR teams are out. They're working more on their PR, their social media. It's very, very obvious that the problem at Man United this season has partly been the players and that's down to the board for keeping players like Bailly and Jones that weren't in all these plans and keeping them here and there unhappy they're not playing that's down to the board for the wrong recruitment but that you know and you know it's just down to the board in general for getting these players maybe it's down a little bit to Oli for being too nice to these players and protecting them because when it got harsh when Ragnit wasn't protecting them when Ragnit was throwing them under the bus because they were throwing him, him under the bus when Ragnit demanded training was tougher when Ragnit demanded them to stop being childish they threw him under the bus. They didn't like it. And I think, you know, this video was going for the dressing release, what we know this season and an inside scoop and everything this season and sort of thinking, where was the problem this season at Manchester United? And I think we can all agree the problem 
was definitely, I think, in the dressing room. The players were not good enough. The players let us down. They're not all problems. Some of them can stay. Some of them aren't good enough, but they've got the right mentality. But some of them were awful this season and really let us down. Guys, please do hit that like button. Please do subscribe. I might be back tonight with video if there's any breaking news. If not, I will be live tomorrow. So make sure you subscribe with that post notification bell on. Sorry if I'm talking a bit quick because um, I just wanted to power through that. I don't want this video to be too long. But yeah, thanks for tuning in.